So our next speaker is uh, is Jurgen. He's going to be talking to us about ASP.NET Core customization. Customization. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's get him brought in here. There we go. We're gonna fly from London. Get ready. Get your wings out. Get your wings out. Here we go. That's a slow flight than the last flight. Well, it's not going as far. It's taking about the same amount of time. That makes sense. There's the boot. Oh. And there we go. We're going into Germany. And where'd it go? There's Jurgen. We've got your screen. Hear you there? Go ahead, Jurgen. Go ahead, you there, Jurgen? We're good. Good start. Code so a lot of stuff in, in the console. Um, same as uh, creating new ASP.NET Core project. In that case, I uh, create an MVC project. I'll name it a logging sample and put it into an output directory called a logging sample. So I create that. And that's all the new packs it needs. Um, after that, I cd to that folder. And open that uh, project in code. So we use this huge console here to 
to see more of the output. Um, and what the later doing here, was we need to the window look to the output, and it's more detailed here in the bigger console than in the either terminal language to the code. That's my opinion. So the project's open. And I also love code because it starts really fast. Yeah, let's have a look into the uh, logging in previous versions. We had some logging configuration in the startup. That's not there anymore since two uh, I think. Um, it's now encapsulated and hidden in this in the default configuration. Here, when we create the web post, we create it with a um, default builder. Um, the configure uh, the logging now is inside this. So, um, able to override the logging configuration, adding uh, or using an extension method to configure logging. And what you see here is exactly what the same what, uh, that is hidden inside. So there's a login configuration that's loaded from the um, from the app settings JSON, and then an, uh, a console logger or debug and a debug logger is added to the to the logging here. So that's pretty much it. So we have, don't have any logging into a file or logging into a database or whatever. No. So what I want to do. Now here is to create a custom logger and uh, put it into this configuration. So what I need to have first is something like a logging configuration that's needed in my case. So uh, I will configure the logger to uh, to handle specific log levels. In this case, it's a, a warning level. Um, I have an event ID, which I want to handle, and a color. This is a, a simple color console logger. In that case, it's, it's uh, nothing sen sensible, but uh, it describes how we can create a custom logger here. So after that, we need a logger provider. This is the thing that gets put it into the logging configuration above. We'll see it later on. I need to add some dependencies here. Yeah. And last but not least, we need to add the actual logger. So I copy paste code snippets from the other window because uh, I'm pretty sure you don't want to see me typing code here. It's too, too much. So, and that's the actual logger. It arise from iLogger. Um, here we get the configuration in here. We can set an iLogger name and so on. We can create a scope if needed. Um, we can figure out whether it's enabled or not. And that's the actual log function here. And what this logger does, it is um, it creates a colored output of uh, specific log levels. So nothing special here. So now we need to add it to the configuration. So first thing we do is we clear the, the providers. And we add a new configuration here. So. And then we add the new logger provider. That's our colored console logger provider, and we pass in the configuration. So all information log infos should be colored in red. So let's try it out. I go back to the console and write .NET run. And we already should see some red logging log entries here. So we still use the console logger here and um, the debug logger. Yeah. So this is the information log info. And uh, let's get colored in red. It doesn't make sense actually, but it's nice to see how the um, the logger and logger provider works. So 
and all the other information is also coded, coded in red. So a more real world scenario where uh, is to um, add a real logging engine. So for example, unlock. So to add unlock, we need to add a package to a project. So we shut that down, clear the screen and say dot net add package and log web dot asp dot net core from nougat i'll load that so it's in yeah uh, also now i need to add some musings and log extensions logging and log web and then I need to add a unlock config. Usually, unlock is configured using a XML config file. So that gets loaded here. And I add the actual unlock logging provider. So I'll comment that out. So the next thing is we need to add the unlock config to a project. And I'll paste some XML in. So what this configuration does is to um, define two different uh, logging things. One is to log all stuff, and the other logs only custom custom um, log entries. So this is defined here. This one adds all, and this one um, only adds Microsoft dot something. So let's run it again. Hope this is a right path. Yeah, it seems so. So we should get one configuration file, uh, one logging file here in our folder. So let's start it again. And Let's have a look into our working folder. One second. Yeah, here's our unlock login file. So let's do something on the web. Just digging around. Uh, it does something. And now let's have a look into the that file. Oh, it opens on the wrong window. I have three monitors here. So that's the log file. So in this way, you're able to create your own custom con uh, logging providers or add some other loggers like log for net or whatever you want to want to add. Um, and log is nice because it um, already has um, Unlock Logger Provider implemented, and you can simply plug it, plug that in. So, yeah, any questions? If no, we'll jump to the next topic. Okay, I hear. So let's jump to the next one. So now we go to the configuration part. Also, this can be customized. Um, also here, I create a new MVC project, uh, the same way, different names, different output folder. Oh, we can close this editor. And, uh, no, nope, that was the wrong, wrong path. I need to CD to the um, configure sample. So, like this. Um, like the um, logging part, there's also no um, configuration configure um, thing here in, um, in the startup as in previous versions.
So we only have this configuration. This is already configured. We get that uh, passed in into the startup and can use it. And the actual configuration is also hidden inside the um, default builder. So here as well, we can uh, override all these uh, configurations here. So, and this is um, uh, also exactly what is uh, configured inside the, the default builder. So we have this environment here, which gets passed in with this uh, builder context. This environment tells us whether we are in uh, dev uh, or in, in, in development mode or production or staging mode. Um, we also set the base path. That's the content root path. This should be the adaptive root folder here. And we add some JSON files. We have the app settings JSON and uh, we have the app settings something JSON. So uh, something is the environment name here. And we see that here. We have the app settings.json and the app settings.development.json. So the second one is optional. And the first one is not optional. So the second one is able to override the settings from the first one. So that's pretty clear, that's standard. We also load the environment variables usually as the last instance. So we'll customize some things here and the environment vari variables configuration should be the last one just to, to override all the previously defined settings. So let's have a look here. That's the uh, standard um, app settings JSON. Simply put another node here and call it app settings. We have a setting called foo and another setting called bar. And to load that app settings in is uh, pretty easy and uh, straightforward. So this is um, simply done by creating a app settings class. I do it here in a startup. Usually you should do it in a separate file. That's my app settings class. And I'm able to load that in, in the service configuration. Uh, we configure our app settings class with this uh, configuration section called app setting. So then we can use the um, app settings in our home controller. That's also pretty clear. So. I just do it now. Yeah. yeah, that's our app setting. We pass it in with an I options object. And yeah, we access our app settings uh, via the uh, value object of this I option object. And then we use that. Uh, this time I implement all the stuff here because we need to test some, some more configurations later on. So I go to the um, index, CSHTML, and pass in some more simpler code than that. So I'll delete that. And um, just show the title and the message. So let's do that. Just to see that our app, app settings class is working. So it's building. Let's call the home page. Yeah, we get that bar from our configuration. It's that thing here. So what we also can do, we can load settings from, from different other files. So let's go back to the program CS. Uh, let's see what is what else we have in in the the config object here. So we have the add command line. So we can use our command line um, options to configure our applications. We can create an in-memory collection, which is our um, just um, a key value collection. We can load uh, 
key per file. So uh, each file name is there's a configuration key and the content of the file is the, the content of the configuration um, value. Or user secrets, which is built in, I think. We can load configurations from XML files and as well from, from any files here. Let's try this. So I call that app settings any. Also use these other options here. So they, this methods look pretty equal. This should also be an any file. And then we are able to create app settings any. So app settings dot any. Uh, let's per, um, add some values. So let me set the, the bar value here. And this should work. Uh, now we should get the value of who bar presented on, on, the, on the index page. So let's rerun that. Refresh the page. Yeah, now it's full bar. That, that's uh, the value from the any file. So again, from from the community, there are a lot more um, configuration providers available for YAML, for example, or maybe for um, to, to load configuration from a database or whatever. And you're also able to create your own uh, configuration providers here. So. Are there any questions about this topic? Okay, so I'll let's stop that. I'll jump to the next one. We actually do have a few questions, so if you want to take some now. Yeah, sure. sure. So we had some questions here. Yeah, feel free um, to ask. <coughs> no, no, we don't, actually. We don't? Let me have you. Oh, no, no, there was a question about console log. Yeah, so Jurgen, there was a question about console I'm log. Just if, um, if you want to ask some questions from the audience, then feel yeah, free to do it. Unmute him. We have one coming right now. So there was a question about okay, console cool. log, and when you were using console log, you, uh, you wrapped it with a lock. When you when you wrote your console logger, was that because it's not thread safe? Oh, I can't hear you anymore. Sorry, the, the you audio stopped. You <laughs> can't hear us. Sorry, buddy. We had a question about console log, and uh, yeah, you you wrapped it in a lock statement. Is that because it's not thread safe? Uh, you're talking about the uh, cu custom logger, right? Right. And we were wondering if it was a uh, section, that's why you wrapped it. I've wrapped it because I want to want to log in, in the right order. I want to confuse with the order, but maybe we don't need this. Uh, I had some, some issues with the coloring that the the uh, there was a race condition between the different log entries then, so that the wrong log entries get colored in the wrong color. Oh, that makes sense. That's I good. Think that, Thank you. Yeah, okay. Good. Let's continue with that. Um, next topic is dependency injection. That's one of my favorite topics because I maintain the uh, Lightcore project, which is a pretty fast um, Dependence injection container. I also tried it to get it running in, uh, on ASP.NET Core. Um, yeah, and you're really able to to replace the um, existing dependence injection container with a with a custom one. And in this demo, I try to do that with the um, myth. Uh, what's its name? Autofac. Yeah, I do it with Autofac. So the project is done. CD to DI sample. Also open that in a new code window. Close that. 
Oops, close that. Code dot to open the new project. So, um, the first thing I'll do in the startup, I, I create a, a small service class on the DTO, just to demo the dependency injection. I'll put it here just to keep it simple. So this is, um, oh, sometimes the code formatting shortcut doesn't work. Um, this is a small service which creates um, a list of 25 persons. Yeah, we need that. And we also need a dependency here, uh, another NuGet package, which I really like. It's, um, it's uh, genfoo. Net add package gen foo, and this is a really small useful library to create test data. And now it's in. Change back to code. Well, we need to restore it here. The small pop ups also shows up if I do a restore in the console. I don't know why. So I use gen foo here. So I'm going to create a list of persons, of 25 persons in that case. So let's go back to the startup. So the configuration of, um, of the DI container is done in the con um, configure service. So we, we get a service collection here and we can add a lot more services. Um, we get some services here, some options. And we got a bunch of services inside these at MVC. So I um, um, recently counted all the services registered in a standard um, ASP.NET Core application, and including, I think, uh, security identity stuff and so on. And we have 140 services then registered without the custom ones. So, um, yep. Um, to add a, uh, an own um, dependency injection container, we need to change this uh, method to configure services a little bit. So it's it's absolutely legal to change the signature. Oops, the signature. I mean, so I can return an I service provider. And I'm able to create a service provider out of the service collection. Services built service provider. Yeah, that's it. So this still works. So this is um, this is absolutely okay to change the, the method like this. So what I wanted first to demonstrate dependency injection is to change the the um, home control a little bit. Um, sorry, because I jump a little bit around here. So I request the I service inside the home controller, and I changed the razor view of. Let's use the about view a little bit. So that's the smallest one, yeah. Well, let's use contact. Makes more sense. So, so I add a, a for each loop here, and the rest is done later, right? No. I'll go back to the controller and um, change this part. So. I use the iService uh, request all persons and return the persons back to, to the view. So we have a list of persons in the view. We need to change the model a little bit. The model and I enumerable of person. I think it's the I sample person, that person. Yeah. Should work. Okay. Yep. 
So, and then back to startup. Let's try whether this is working or not. So I register the service here. So currently it's still the, um, oh, that's a little bit wrong, service add transient. A little bit too fast here. Sorry about that. So we have the A service and my service, and then so that should be the default registration way. Yeah. So I surely need to have a look whether this is working or not. Do not run. So I want to ensure that all the the service collection configuration is working before I replace the DI container with the with the artifact. So that looks good. Uh, let's go to the contact page. And this is working too. So we, here we have the list of, of persons generated by Genfu. So until now, this is the default dependence injection we should use in, in ASP.NET Core. So now let's replace this with Autofuck. To do this, we need um, Autofuck extension. This is a NuGet package. So we call .NET add package again. This is Autofuck.extensions.dependency injection. Let's load that. Okay. Need to restore it, and then we can add the artifact configuration. So these are some lines of code. This could be wrapped in a different in a different method. I'm gonna put it in here. So we don't return the the standard build service uh, standard service provider. We use the service provider from artifact in that case. So. So Autofuck works the same way as Lightcore, so we need to create a, a container builder first to create the DI container. And um, the container builder then builds the actual um, container. So this is our property we need to add here. So uh, we store it in the, in the startup to reuse it. And then the application container, the build container, gets passed into the artifact service provider. You can also create your own service provider if you want to maybe support um, some other dependence injection. I'm not sure if Ninject currently um, brings its own um, service provider. Well, when I last tried it, um, I needed to create the service container by myself. So, and this is special here because we need to register all the already registered services inside the um, artifact container. So that's what this uh, method does. So it collects all the services from the service collection and puts the services or register the, the services inside the container builder. So this should work. And we can remove this um, registration and activate that one. So this is the autofoc way to register services. So we should register a type as a contract. Okay, well, this should work too. Let's rerun it. So when should you replace your, the, the default dependence injection container? Usually it doesn't make sense so, because the current one works pretty well, but there are some other dependence injection containers with uh, nice features. For example, an inject um, can I have a look into a folder and search for uh, assemblies with the right services inside and so on. So there's an auto registration in Ninject, for example. And maybe you like these features and want to use it in ASP.NET Core 2. 
Okay, it's working. On every refresh, we get a new list because it's implemented like this. But you see, it's it's working. We get this uh, list of persons here. Good. Okay, do we have questions about this topic? I think I need to get a little bit faster through the topics here. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Oops, so next one is HTTPS. That's a small one. Um, <clears throat> let's create the project. And open that um, HTTPS is um, enabled by default since since two one I think. Um, but currently it's it's working using the the Windows certificate store on Windows and on, on Linux and Mac you can pass in uh, um, your own certificate file and um, sometimes I really like the idea to to uh, use. Um, specific certificate file instead of using the certificate store in Windows. And you can use this in, uh, in ASP.NET Core and Windows too. So let's open that. As you can see in the startup, we already have some configurations about um, HTTPS. So we have an HTTPS redirection here, so that redirects the HTTP request to HTTPS. We also have this um, H HSTS um, middleware here to enforce um, a certificate validation. And also hidden in the program CS, we have um, the configuration of, um, of HTTPS. So Castro is already listening on on um, the HTTPS, HTTPS port. So this is configured in the program, also hidden in that method. And we can also override this. So, and to use our own certificate file, we can add a, um, a port here, which should be listened on. Uh, we register the address, the port, and some listen options, and these options enables HTTPS on that port, and we can add a certificate file here. So this is a certificate PFX and a top secret password. And also this should work if I drag and drop the certificate in here. Oh, that doesn't work here. So I'll drop that in. So that should be, that's weird, I don't see that. Ah, it was, an, it was a Dropbox error. So the certificate is here now. Here it is. Now we can start that up, dot and run. the wrong button. Anyway, this won't work because of the, the uh, wrong host name. Currently, the certificate is uh, created for localhost and not for this um, IP address. But if I try to that, it will work. So it's a secure, it's a secure connection with a custom certificate file. So usually on Windows, you should use the certificate store, but sometimes it's easy, easier maybe to uh, change to a specific file. Or in, in a special case when you want to, sh uh, to run the applications in, on, on Mac, Linux, and Windows without different configurations. Maybe. So, okay, that's about HTTPS. And the next one is um, 
the next topic is about uh, the hosted services. So I uh, really like hosted service. Hosted service is a, a feature to run a task in the background of an application. Uh, no, oh, oh, 005, it's, yeah. So this is also a quick demo. Let's create a new embassy application. And, um, yeah, let's see the hosted services. I'll open that in code. Uh, also, to keep it simple, I uh, put the hosted service class in the startup. So, what's that? No document formatter for C sharp files. No, it worked previously. So, let's do a little do it like this. So the hosted service is uh, derived from from hosted service. It's a simple class, nothing special here. Um, we pass in the logger here because I want to show the the background task via the console logging. And we have a start async method and a stop async method. And usually we start doing the task in the in the start async class and clean up some things in the stop async uh, method, not class, sorry. And then we create a new uh, task factory and yeah, do some stuff in a, in a while loop here. So it's only about logging. It waits for some, for two seconds and then continues logging. So uh, pretty simple. So we need to add these usings here. This, okay, it's uh, all green now. So it should work. So, and all we need to do to get the hosted service running is to register it in the DI container. So we add it as a singleton, um, add I hosted service and the actual class, and now it should work. That's all right, done that run. Yeah, it's launching, it's up and running. Yep, yeah. so all two seconds, it logs an entry out. So now it does some more and it still logs. So it, it works in the background, you can use the these to do some background tasks, fetching some data from somewhere, or whatever you want to do in the background. So I really like this um, this feature. So let's stop it and unstop. We have this log output here, hosted services stopping. Any questions about that? If not, We'll go to the next topic. So the next one is uh, middlewares. So I'll also create a, a new project, and it's in this case an empty web project. It's not MVC here, it's, it's web, which is an empty one. Uh, and then open that in code. Okay, and if we have a, oh, that's the wrong folder, sorry. And if you open the, the startup, we already see two middlewares, I think, um, one or two. Yep, we see two different middlewares here. You have this uh, middleware which uh, renders out a string, which, which is only hello world and then text format. And we have this uh, developer exception page, which is also a middleware that uh, checks for errors in the, in the pipeline here. So we can 
put some things into the pipeline, some more middlewares to show how middlewares are working. So the ordering matters here. That's, a, that's important to know. So the first middleware gets executed uh, the f uh, as, as first one, and the second one as its second place, and that's the last one. So we have two different kind of middlewares. We have the app use middlewares, which are calling a next middleware. The next one is this one. And also this, this is calling the next middleware, which is that middleware here. And this middleware doesn't continue to another middleware. So it stops here, the pipeline stops. And uh, the execution gets back through, back up to uh, through all, all the middleware. So we see, we see that in a second. So let's run that. That's running. Yeah. So, yep, that's the first string. The second string, that's the string of the first middleware from the second middleware. That's the uh, the last one, and it goes back. So, we can create a lot more middlewares. For, um, for, for example, a real world scenario is a stopwatch. You can add a stopwatch here. This is uh, the same thing as the other one but it actually does something maybe useful. So it, it uh, measures the execution time here and writes out the time needed. Let's rerun that. Okay. Well, now it says we need 10 milliseconds and now it's cached, almost cached. So it's working. We can do some more with middlewares. We can add a um, routing, something like routing. So it's, it's custom routing. So I define a, a middleware which is mapped on that route here. So we can continue the pipeline inside this map. And the same with a different map. And no one wants to use these kind of middlewares. I think um, the most common way to create middlewares is to create a middleware class. I'll do the same method here, uh, same class, sorry. This is a stopwatch middleware class. That's a normal stupid class here. And usually you should write a, a nice extension method to um, to use this middleware. So we can write app dot use stopwatch, that one. So this should work as well. So I don't demo that because we are running out of time, I think. Um, one more interesting thing are the, the next topic, um, I think uh, the output format is. Let's go to that one. Yep. I create a new MSC page, MSC project, and CD to that. So Jurgen, while you're while you're setting up this this demo, and we and we get into the last few minutes here, uh, some folks were asking, yep. why would you set up a certificate in ASP.NET Core instead of using IIS or Nginx as a proxy? Um, maybe I self-host this application, or um, uh, it's it's just hosted in Kestra running somewhere. In, in, so I'm, I'm talking about running running the web without an IS or an Nginx or something like this. So and sure, it's nice when you're in a network. container, and and you don't really need all that front end ceremony with uh, Nginx or IIS. Exactly. Yeah. And when you showed us a little bit about using Autofac, that isn't really needed, right? That's nice to have if you really need some of those extended features of Autofac for for. Um, yeah. 
dependency injection. What kinds of things do you see using Autofac in that model for? You know, what what are the real things that make you say, "Oh my gosh, yes, this is why I need to use Autofac." Yeah, Autofac. I use Autofac because it's an easy demo because they already implemented a service um, provider. But I really like the the features of of an inject, for example, to to auto register um, classes and services from from different assembly. I can I can tell an inject, uh, please look in this directory and load me all the all the needed to, um, services. That's a nice feature of an inject. And you can use any other um, DI container, which, for example, use uh, has this feature inside. Autofact is also a pretty simple one, like the the um, ASP.NET Core dependency injection container. Very cool. Yeah, we're we're just about out of time. We got about five more minutes, so I'll I'll let you uh, wrap up your demo there and uh, take it away. Okay, thanks. So yeah, I created the output format sample project. I opened that in code. And create a simple API um, controller. So let's do it here. New, new file. I call it persons controller. Oh, it won't work here. So persons controller.cs. Paste in the class I also create a person class I put it into the same file here keep it simple and I add an action to the controller so formatting won't work here ah no it does so we also need um genfu dot net add package genfu So that gets passed in until then I add some dependencies using this. That should be in now. Yeah, no. Code needs some time. Okay, using Janfu. And we have a person's controller here. Uh, the, the Goal is to um, register output formatters to not only output the persons in, in a JSON format, but maybe in, in CSV or in, in a vCard output as well. So what I need to do is to register some output formatters. This is done in startup, right? Yes, it's done in startup oh, in the registration of MVC. So I had some MVC options. Need that so this doesn't work currently. I need to add the the output formatter classes. So first one is the uh, vcart formatter. Paste that in here, and the second one is uh, a CSV output format. So for the CSV part, I need uh, another dependency. Which is a CSV helper. And while this gets in, I can start to add the usings. This is Microsoft.net on coding system text. So the person is on the controller side. Here we need the logger. And the CSV writer. The code needs some more time to think about the CSV helper here. So this is needed system IO. So now it should work. So just the two different um, um, output formatter. One is a vCard, the other one is CSV output formatter. So here we have uh, from registration. So let's see how it works. That was pretty fast. <laughs> so 
Sometimes namespaces get confused in the startup. So, come on. Yeah, looks good. So, the web is still running, hopefully. And I already prepared the request in Postman. So, Postman is a nice tool to do um, um, uh, web API request. So, here we have a request to the a person's controller. So, I try to do a copy. Application JSON. That's the default behavior here. So I send the get request to the person's controller and get a nice um, JSON result. And if I change that to text, uh, come on, text CSV, then I get a CSV result. So we accept. Uh, different formats here. So when we say, uh, when you say accept CSV, we get CSV. And if you say want to have text uh, vCard, we get the vCard result. Now we have real vCards. We can import that in Outlook and so on. So this is a nice way to, to change uh, to, to various outputs like Excel or Word. I also, also did a Word output formatter. That's, that is awesome stuff, uh, Jurgen. We, it's great to see that the output formatters in, in ASP.NET Core and Web API are still there and there's still great things that we can use, right? So that a Web API can learn from what type it is that you're requesting and just respond and reformat stuff without you as an API author having to go and write all of that translation stuff, like I might do if I was writing it with exactly. a Razor page, right? <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Do you have a list of resources for us here as we wrap up the session? Uh, yeah, I have all the stuff in um, yeah, on GitHub. So let's have a look. So it's all here. There it is. I create a repository with all the stuff and all the demos. It's up that way. So very cool stuff. Thank you so much, Jurgen, for joining us here at .NET Conf. We really appreciate you taking the time, presenting, walking us through all this stuff. Uh, for everybody in the chat room, if you like what you saw, this will be archived and it'll be over on YouTube a little bit later. And we're going to be rerunning all of .NET Conf all weekend long. You're going to be able to watch uh, anything that you may have missed, or if it was airing during a time zone that wasn't during a time that wasn't good for your time zone, you'll be able to check it out. So thanks so much, Jurgen. We really appreciate it, and we'll catch you later, thanks, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. And we're going to disconnect. Fantastic. There we go. So Brady and I are here. My name is Jeff Fritz, and he's sliding right in. Brady Gaster. Hello, hello. How's it going, everybody? Good morning. It is now, we're closing in on 6 a.m. Pacific time. This is, we're, we're into hour 13 of the 24 hours of .NET Conf. Good morning, ThinkBot Labs. Great to see you. Um, we've got some more great content coming up. We're going to be bringing in Edward Thompson in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. He's out in London, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, no, Cambridge. 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 Okay, so you've got them all set to go over there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go to a quick break while we get while we get Edward dialed in. Hope you stick around with us for the next hour. Sliding right in a strange name. Yes, there he is, Brady Gaster. And there he goes. So stay tuned. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get Edward all set up here, and we'll see you in just a minute. <laughs>